Welcome everyone. In this video, we are covering polygons. You can access the polygon tool from the quick access menu. It is just next to the place mark icon. Alternatively, you can also find it under the add menu under polygon and the command for that is control shift and G. I'm going to click on the polygon in the quick access menu now. This window is going to appear and it is important to keep it open. If you close it, then the tool is also going to close. So you can only use the tool while the window is opened. You can reduce the size of the window just by left clicking, holding and dragging on one of the corners. Now I'm going to move it to the side for a bit. We can assign a name to the polygon shape and a description if we want to. We can also adjust its style and color from the second tab. And we can also assign an altitude to the polygon from the altitude tab. Under the measurement tab, we can see any measurements that apply to our polygonal shape. Polygons can measure perimeters and areas, and this is also applicable to circles, which we're going to take a look at in another video. So let's say that we want to create an outline of this field here and measure its area. I'm going to left click in the viewport once to start the first point and then continue this process to create the remaining segments that will make up our polygon. Just like with the path tool, if you want to adjust any of these points, you can left click, hold and drag on them, and this will allow you to reposition them. If you want to delete a point, you have to select it first just by left clicking on it, and then you can right click with your mouse button, Alternatively, you can press the delete button on the keyboard, which is going to do the same thing. If you want to create many points in succession, for example, to trace a curve, you can left click, hold, and then drag your cursor to trace the curve. And if you want to delete many points in succession, so you don't have to select each one individually and delete it one by one, you can select the last point from which you want to start deleting backwards, and then you can just hold the delete button on the keyboard. Now with our polygon shape outline here, we can see the perimeter and the area for it. At the moment, these are in metric units, but if you click on any of the drop-down menus, you can change the units of measurement. I'm going to name this polygon area, and then under the style and color tab, I want to adjust the fill color of the polygon and make it transparent. We can do that under the area section just by adjusting the opacity. I'm going to reduce it from 100% or fully opaque down to zero, which is going to make it fully transparent. I want to also change the line color and increase the width. At the moment, we don't actually see the outline of the polygon. This is because under area, the mode is set to field. But if I expand this drop-down menu, we can see we have a couple of other modes. One is an outline and the other is called filled plus outlined. If I set it just to outlined, then only the outline of the polygon is going to be displayed. So even if the opacity of the area is set to 100, we are still not going to see it. Whereas if I set it to filled plus outlined, we are going to get both the outline of the polygon as well as the fill within it. For now, I'm going to keep this just to outlined and I'm going to change the color of the line to a red color just by clicking on the color swatch and selecting a color and I'm going to increase the width to 5. Under the altitude tab is where we can assign an elevation to our polygon. At the moment the field under altitude is grayed out because the mode is set to clamped to ground meaning that the polygon is sticking to the terrain regardless of whether the 3D terrain is turned on or off. But if we set this to relative to ground then we can set an altitude. Let's say that we set an altitude of 50 meters and I'm going to type 50 and press tab. So now if I switch to perspective view, we can see that the polygon is hovering above the terrain. We have the option to extend the sides to the ground. What this is going to do is make extension lines from the polygon outline down to the terrain. So if I tick this box, we can see the extension lines. This could be very useful for visualizing features like fence posts or power lines. Now that we have set an elevation for our polygon, if we go back to the style and color tab and switch the area mode from outlined to either filled or filled plus outlined, we are going to get this 3D looking polygon that is completely filled. We can change the color for that from white to let's say green 
and press OK. We can also adjust the opacity for this entire shape. Let's say we want to make it 50% transparent. This could be very useful for highlighting certain areas or zones on a concept plan and make them stand out like that. It could also be useful for visualizing buildings, for example. Now I want to bring the opacity back to 100% for the area as I want to demonstrate something. And I'm also going to go under the altitude tab and set the mode back to clamped to ground. Now with that done, I'm going to press OK for now. And I want to go to the top view and I want to draw out another polygon within this one. So I'm going to head back over to the add polygon tool and enable that. And I'm going to call this polygon two. And I'm just going to draw it out within this one. And I'm going to change the area color for it to blue as well as the outline color. Now, if I go under the altitude tab for this new polygon, we can see that there is this draw order field here. What this controls is how polygons are being displayed to us. If a polygon has a higher draw order than other polygons that are overlaying it, then that polygon is going to be displayed at the top. Whereas if it has a lower draw order than another polygon that is overlaying it, it's going to be hidden by it or it's going to be layered below it. This is Google Earth's way of understanding layering. It does not have a traditional layer system as you may have been accustomed to. For example, we can see that under the list of places, the green polygon is above the blue one, but we can see that the blue one is still being displayed on top of the green one. And it doesn't matter which way we move them, we are still going to get the same result. But if I go under the properties of the green polygon and under the altitude tab, I set a draw order of one, we can see that the blue polygon is going to be hidden. This is because our blue polygon had a draw order of zero. So the green one has a higher draw order and it's therefore being rendered at the top. Now, interestingly, this doesn't apply to the outlines of the polygons because the outline is still considered a line or a path object. And so draw ordering doesn't apply to path objects. It only applies to image overlays and to polygons. This could be something that you could use to your advantage when you're layering polygons, because it will give you an indication whether you have a polygon underneath another polygon, which I imagine could be useful in some cases. But if in your particular situation, it's not something that you want to have, then you can simply go under the properties of the polygon whose outline you want to hide. And then under the style and color tab, under the line section, simply set the opacity to zero. Now I'm going to set the area color of the green polygon to something that is more easy on the eyes, like a darker color and maybe reduce its opacity. And I can delete the blue polygon as we don't need it anymore. One last thing to cover is that polygons can contain other data within them. For example, you can attach a description to this polygon or you can embed it with a link to a web page just by clicking on the add link button and then pasting your link in the field here. You can also link directly to an image on the web by clicking on the add web image button and then providing a direct link. Or you can attach an image from your hard drive just by clicking on the add local image button and then navigate to the location where you have your image, select it and click on open. You can also attach more than just one image to a polygon. And even when you are importing your images, you can select more than one at the same time and import them all at once. So for instance, if I want to import all of these four images, I can just select all of them at once and click on open. Now I can press OK on the polygon properties. And if I want to see my images, I can just left click on the polygon either in the viewport or under the list of places. Expand any of these images so that I can see more detail. I can just right click on any of them here and go under open image. This is going to display the image directly into Google Earth. If you left click into the image, you can zoom into it. And if you hold the middle mouse button and drag your cursor around, you can pan around the image. If you want to exit out of the image to go back to the Google Earth viewport, you can click on the back to Google Earth button in the top left corner. From here, you can export this polygon out if you want to share it with someone else, including any data, including images that you may have attached to it. 
To do that, you can just right click on the polygon shape under the list of places and go under save place as. Then you can give it a file name and choose the file type. When you're exporting individual shapes out of Google Earth or even entire folders that contain images or images that are embedded into shapes, such as we have right now, then it's probably best to export out as a KMZ. This is because KMZ will allow you to retain all of those images directly into the KMZ file. If you were to export out as a KML, then the images are going to be exported out separately as a separate file to the KML file. So if you're sending the KML to someone else and you want them to have access to the images, you would also have to send out those images separately. So it's just not as convenient as KMZ when it comes to dealing with images. If, however, I was just exporting this polygon without any images attached to it, I would probably export it out as a KML because if I'm sharing it with someone else and they try to load it in an external application or a web application, then that application may have issues reading KMZ, but most applications that can read Google Earth files have no issues with KML. But in this case, we're dealing with images and I want all of those to be retained within one single KMZ file. So I'm going to export it out as a KMZ. I'm going to click on save and now I can delete this polygon from within Google Earth. If I want to import the polygon back into Google Earth, I can just grab it from my desktop and drag and drop it in the Google Earth viewport. And now we can see it loaded here. Just to verify that the images are still embedded into it, I'm going to left click on it and we can see that now the images are also going to load up. And with that done, I think that this wraps it up for polygons for now. Thank you for watching. I hope the video was useful and I'm looking to share more with you in the next sessions.